All right, in this video, we're going to talk all about binding in Svelte. Let's get into it with a very simple example, and this is two-way data binding. So if you're not familiar with the term two-way data binding, I'm going to show you exactly how it works right now. So first of all, in my app.svelte file, I'm going to open up a pair of script tags, and then underneath that, I'm going to add some elements to the DOM. I'm going to add a simple input field, and basically what I want to happen is when the user enters some data into this input field, I want that data to update and appear on the page underneath it. So in order to do that, let's also create a paragraph tag underneath the input. And we're going to create a variable, which we're going to interpolate here. We'll call it user input. And let's go up into our script tags. Let's declare that variable, user input. And we're going to initialize it to an empty string. All right, so right now you don't see anything output here because it's initialized to an empty string. Just to make sure it's working, let's add some text actually into this user input. And now we see it appearing here. But let's go back and set that to an empty string. And in this input field, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Svelte's bind value directive. And I'm going to set that equal to the user input variable. So now let's check out what happens. As I type in the input field, notice that the paragraph text is getting updated dynamically on the page. Basically here we have two-way data binding in action. The input field is initially getting its value from the value of this user input variable. However, then as the user is typing into the input field box, the value of the user input is getting updated. And as a consequence, it's getting output dynamically to the page. So let's say that we didn't have this bind directive. How else could we accomplish the same thing? Well, let's go ahead and let's comment out this chunk of code. And then I'm going to go down here where I have an alternate way of doing it. I'm going to paste that code up here. And let's take a look at this alternate way of doing it. So here I have an input field. But instead of using the bind directive, I'm using Svelte's on directive. And I'm setting it to listen for an input type event. Now, when the user inputs values into the input field, we're going to call the handle input function, which is right here. And this is like doing add event listener. So whenever you're using add event listener, you have access to the event object, which gets automatically passed into the function. And e.target.value is going to be the user input. So in this case, what's happening is whenever the user enters some values into the input field, our user input variable is getting updated. And again, it's being output to the page. So you can see that with this way, the code is more verbose, right? We have to both set up this on input event listener, basically. And we also have to write a function to update the user input variable. However, in this case, all we have to do is simply use the bind directive. Now that we've seen this alternate approach, let's just get rid of it. And let's talk about the fact that you can bind to other types of inputs as well. So here we're binding to an input of type text, but we can also bind to an input of type checkbox. So whereas with the input of type text, we were interested in getting the value from the input field, with an input of type checkbox, we're interested in getting basically the state of the checkbox, whether or not it's checked. So this is more of a toggle type situation. Here, instead of binding to value, we're going to bind to checked. And again, we're going to set this to a variable. And instead of calling it user input, let's call it checked. And we'll go up here and we'll change this to checked. And instead of setting it to an empty string initially, we'll set it to a Boolean value and we'll start off with false. And then we'll also update this to checked so we can see it on the page. And here we can see false. So now if I check the checkbox, you'll see that the Boolean state toggles between true and false. So notice that we have a bind of type checked. And because our variable name to which we assigned it has the same name, right, checked and checked, Svelte gives us a shorthand which we can use. So from the equal sign to the end of the tag, we can get rid of all this. And we can just leave it like bind checked. And you'll see that it works exactly the same way. And that type of shorthand will work to any kind of input binding. So here, for example, if instead of calling it user input, we had called it value, we could get rid of all this. 
But now I also want to show you something really cool that Svelte does. And this is in a situation where we have an input with a numeric type. So for example, let's create a numeric input of type number and let's bind to it. So for a numeric input, this could be an input of type number or an input of type range as well. For that, what we're going to use is value again. And let's assign it to a variable. And instead of calling it checked, let's call it numeric input. And so we'll change checked here to numeric input. And let's initialize that to a value of 0. And then let's go and output that on the page. So we'll do numeric input here. And now with this much set up, we have two-way data binding working. As you can see, when I increment and decrement, the paragraph tag underneath gets updated as well. But what I want to point out to you here is that Svelte is doing type coercion behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and let's use a type of operator to see the type of numeric input. And you'll see that it's number. So this might not seem significant to you, except for the fact that normally when we're working with the DOM, we get a string type when we're using a numeric input. And so we have to do an extra step to coerce that type ourselves. Here Svelte is doing it for us automatically. And so for example, if I, let's say, wanted to multiply the numeric input by 20, I can do that straight off the bat. Right, so if this had been a string type, we would have gotten string concatenation instead of multiplication, which is what we're getting here. So if you want to take your web development skills to the next level, check out the Code Creative Store for courses and free content. I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and the comment sections down below. Also, drop me a comment and let me know if you've tried Svelte yet, or if you're planning on giving it a try. See you next time.